And joining us now in the studio is a special guest whom we've agreed to refer to by only his first name to protect his identity. Well, first of all, Larry, welcome to the EVCast. Good to have you with us today. Thank you. It's great to be here. And Larry, I understand you are a former EV1 owner, and you have what I understand to be some unusual, uh, surprising theories about what actually happened to the EV1 and the crushing of it. Uh, first of all, Ryan, they're not theories. It's fact. Facts. Okay, very good. Well, let's let's dive right into the facts. Okay, well, many people believe that the technology that General Motors had for the EV1 was way ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. I think most people agree with that. Uh, but what most people don't know is that the technology wasn't their own. It was alien. Wait, do you mean to say undocumented workers from where, Mexico, were sneaking across the border with EV technology? No, 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 no. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about Mexicans or, or Canadians. I'm talking about the Flormox <laughs> from the planet Zion, Galaxy Nebulae. Flormax? I, I've never heard of this Flormax. Flormax. <laughs> Now, assuming this is true, and I'm going to say outright, this is a very big assumption. Tell us, what was the role of this floor max? Floor marks. Floor marks. marks. Floor marks. Marks. Floor marks in terms of bringing this technology to the EV-1. Well, actually, the EV-1 was unlimited range. Uh, General Motors, Un- unlimited range? Unlimited range. General Motors put a self-imposed range of about 80 to 100 miles on the car. But uh, the unlimited range technology was from the aliens. They had to tone it down to make it seem like it was technology from this world. Okay, so again, assuming this is all true... Why in the world, if GM had a technology that was actually out of this world, would they go and crush it and take it away? They didn't crush it. That was all a conspiracy. You see, General Motors actually had a short-term lease on the technology. The aliens were putting it out for the highest bidders. So Ford and Nissan, are, are we to believe that all of these car companies were bidding for this technology? No. Uh, on this planet, the planet Earth, GM won the contract for the bid. So this GM was, a- was the only company actually bidding for it on this Earth. The problem was, somebody from the own galaxy, Nebulae, actually won the contract. So the aliens had to take back that technology, and they had to pretend to crush the cars. What they actually did was just crush the... Uh, the shells of the car when all the technology went with the aliens. So the EV-1 was not the victim of corporate greed, oh. but in fact was the victim of a intergalactic bidding war. Fascinating. Now, how do you explain or account for the EV-1s that are still available in museums in the United States today? Those are not true EV-1s, those are actually cars manufactured by General Motors with inferior products. Sort of like the, uh, the Volt that will be coming out soon. <laughs> wow. So was GM able to uh, deconstruct this technology and learn something from this alien technology? <laughs> That assumes that you assume, and everybody else, that people at General Motors know what they're doing. But uh, they couldn't do that, no. Now, what would you say to those who are eagerly awaiting the launch of the Volt coming up in just a few short months? Well, I would say that uh, we better hope General Motors has enough money to win the bid this time, because they didn't last time, so I don't think they're going to do it this time. So are we to believe that once again they're about to introduce a car using interplanetary technology? Of course. Wow. This, Larry, has been an absolutely fascinating discussion, and I thank you for stopping by the EVCast today. You bet. Thanks for having me.